That was They Live, by the way. Great movie, great soundtrack. Talking about Emotiva B1s. Now, I have the projection screen down because we're going to reveal a thing, which is going to take 40 seconds, so I better start doing that now. These are the passive Emotivas. Look, they're plugged in with cords. And yes, they're upside down. And the reason they're upside down is that the tweeter is about more, more in line with your height and has to match the screen. Everyone always asks me why my speakers are upside down. Let's settle this right here in the first minute of this video. You see this big white sheet that obviously isn't used for any sort of projecting onto with a projector or movies? This determines where these speakers have to be. All right? Why are your speakers standing so high? See here. You're fucking looking at the reason. Because when shit's happening on screen, you want it to be fu- And then this is, I know, this is very, very anal, but this is what they say. Not halfway up the screen, five-eighths up the screen is where you want the sound to be. Boop. And why are they upside down? Well, because if I put them right side up, then the tweeter's up here, and then it's not five-eighths, it's too high, and I'm down there. So, turn it upside down, it's fine. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Everyone who sees these in my apartment, oh, those are the um, Air Motive Fives, and they're not. If you don't know what the Air Motive Fives are, by the way, there they are. Air Motive Fives are the self-powered monitors. They came first. For like two years, they came first. And obviously when I got the B1s, it was going to require a comparison. Isn't this uh, quick and sexy? This is exactly what all the, all the ladies want. They want to be wooed by the sound of your struggling linear actuators. Perfect. I've got a little bit of a setup going on here. God damn you, son. I hate the sun sometimes. I'm going to beat it. Will that do it? That's probably making it worse. Anyway, interesting setup going on here because I had to bring out the self-powered Air Motive Fives. I had the Air Motive Sixes, and for the longest time, and probably still to this day, if I put the Air Motive Sixes up on top of my Doom Stacks, wire in the Martin Logan Dynamo 300 subs, and use that as a self powered front left and front right, that's about as good as it gets for home theater. As far as volume and impact, and oh my god, I'd shit my pants and I have to buy a new couch. So we're here with the baby Air Motive Fives, which are half the weight and a little bit less cost. They've actually gone up in price since I bought them. And I reviewed these and I loved them. People would be like, oh, the LSR 305s, which you can't see anymore because it's back in there, or these. And I would, I would edge to these. I would edge to them every time because they're better built and they've got supreme low-end capabilities and they just image amazingly. So what Emotiva did is yank the amplifiers out of the back. So instead of looking like that, with a big slot port that's like a handle, it looks like that, with a normal round port. Oh, and they've also added these grills. I'll turn them right side up for you, for you guys. Hold on. So there it is. There's your, there's your Emotiva. It's got the same tweeter. It doesn't have the same driver. If I'm going by feels and looks alone, this has a little stiffer cone, little stiffer surround, and the cone is a fake phase plug. It's that point. That point doesn't do anything, so they didn't bother on this. Here are the grill covers, the cover grills, held on by magnets. There's only one problem, and I never have to bring this problem up with any other speaker, is that they're really sloppy. I don't know if you could see this, because it's a black grill on a black speaker on a bright ass sunny day. Do you hate sunny days? But yeah, if you look, you could sort of adjust this like that, or like this, or like that, or like, well, not like that, but that. It doesn't, what pair of speakers did I have recently that I could just, oh, my uh, Klipsch RP150Ms. All I do is like that, and the speaker grill is perfect. It just lines up perfectly. And these have to be like, manhand not manhandled but like you have to put them on and then adjust them to be straight and i didn't realize how annoying that was going to be 
but there it is. So you get to put on the wife acceptance factor increasers, which makes these speakers, well, boring looking. So we'll take those off. Will they stick to this? Oh, they will stick to that. I didn't even try it. It's gotta be just a, a screw pattern, yeah. Hmm. So now I have the very first pair of Air Motive Fives with speaker covers on them. Cause that's one of the things that, so they didn't even re-engineer the front. They just took it. It's got the same finish. It's got like that fake leather wrapped vinyl finish. They weigh a whole lot less because, well, there's no amplifiers inside. Standard binding posts designed in Nashville, made in China. Cardboard tube port, which is going to be important to talk about because the LS50 showed up and they have a weird silicone soft tube port. Let's talk about the actual speakers now. Sh should we do that? Should we, should we talk about the speakers or should we talk about how they compare to these Air Moto 5s, which were good enough out here in my room to cause me to spend hundreds of dollars more to get the sixes to see if they'd be good in my room, and they are, and they are. And then I actually had the Stealth 8s, which are like the next level up from the sixes, and those things were ridiculous, but I didn't like them out in a room because they work better on a desk. These are not as good as the Air Moto 5s. Let's just start with that. Let's just get that out of the way. Because you're going to be... No, they're not. Because when you look at a powered monitor, you go, okay, we plug in a source. You get some tone controls for high frequency, low frequency, different inputs, power switch. You're done. It's a very simple back on these air, mot air motives. Because Emotiva, there's no even volume control. You can't even adjust it. There's a pot buried in there, and you could twist that. But that's just to tweak things. You shouldn't have to do that ever. And what the amplifiers in here are, are, well, it's by amping the speaker. This has its own amplifier, and this has its own amplifier. And all the crossover points that moderate which frequencies go where are done before the amplifier. That's how, that's the best way to do it. The amplifier gets full power to this. The amplifier gets full power to this. And what you signals you send are just signals you send, so they're not cut off, there's no crossover. This, this passive unit, is an amazing example of what happens when you're not doing all that hard-ass work, and you're just throwing capacitors and coils and, and things in the crossover to sort of limit what this gets and limit what that gets, and you gotta move power around, and it's definitely not as refined. Sharper treble than these. I'm going to have to talk about them overall. I can't just keep comparing them to these because I'm sure 98.75% of the people watching this video, which is a very educated guess, have no concept of what even these sound like. But I can go back and watch that review if you could find it because it is like two years old and just, just revel in what I was talking about. These now we have to compare because they're $300 a pair. Let's bring up the website and let's walk over my teeter hangups and Grab my thingy. Got a thingy, Chewbacca. I got it. Airmotive B1s, bookshelf loudspeaker, sold in pairs. I checked $300. Now, Emotiva's decided to go and push for a full line of speakers. And you could hear it with these. There's the T2s, which are these giant fucking, just giant fucking towers. But in the same breath as I say that, and I'm going to sort of critique the whole line right now. I should have brought out the Air Moto 6s because the, 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 the MT tweeter here on the 6s is huge. It's huge. It's four times the, the actual area. But they've taken the smaller one from the 5s and they put it into the speakers. Okay, maybe that's fine. But they've taken the smaller one from the 5 and they put it into the massive towers and the not so massive towers and then the center. And then they put them in the B ones. They put them in the C one center, and they put them in the Air Motive E two. So they just made a trillion of these things. And even the E ones, which are a flat speaker, which if I was going to change out my side speakers, that would be a consideration because it's super flat. It's front ported, and I'd probably paint them white just to have a video where I paint speakers white. Now, I'm currently got this set up where there's my center channel pre out split up to these two and then when the screen is down that's just center channel both of these play center channel that plays right and that plays left i had to think for a second that i 
Because God knows with these reviews, I will re reverse that. And then you'll be like, why is the video backwards? These, now I just said these speakers sound like they came from a line of speakers. Let me explain why. They lack low end. They lack it. For, for, for what these can do, and I know these can do it, these don't sound like they've got enough going on. And it takes me a second to remember, like, oh, that's because they expect these to be put in a home theater. I use them on my desk. I use them on my, my computer desk in here, where the current Mackies are kicking ass and taking names. And they work. They work adequately. They're not as good as that. Powered monitors with dedicated DSP corrections on the before the amplifier will always be better on a desk. It takes a very special type of speaker, like the pre-aforementioned Klipsch RP150M, which just happened to be amazing on a desk. So these, these, hold on. That's Windows key, okay. I don't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get why they have no low end. Why is the low end so reduced? And the reduced low end does... Well, it does one thing. I was trying to think of it did two things. It only does one thing. It's designed to have all the low end offloaded to a subwoofer. To your point one. Oh. But this two things. That's one thing. It's designed to do that for a reason. When you push a speaker loud, when you push it loud, what breaks, what causes it to fail and sound terrible is the bass reproduction is getting too wild and then just things are bad. So if you remove the low end from the speaker, you can push it louder. That's why when you have the Vanatu T0s or T1s and you plug a subwoofer into them, it automatically takes everything that was magically doing down to 40 hertz and says, fuck that, 80 or 120 hertz. Just those things are gone. Give it to the sub. The sub can handle it. So you get quite loud speakers. Get it? Loud speakers? Where, where these, I, I didn't want to push super hard or I had to turn down the thing or I had to cut off the, the frequency response of the front channels to get them to play loud without sound like they were going to explode. These will automatically do that. They're designed for home theater use. They're designed to not have as much bass. These are their small ones. So almost they're designed for rear channel use. I'm not gonna say that because they're too good for that. They are good. I mean, I'm getting out of my way. They are good. They're not as good as this bag that came with the Aperion Intimus uh, 5Bs though, which I forgot to talk about in their review and I feel bad because I want to box them back up in case I decide to put those in a Patreon yard sale, and I went, oh my god, I forgot about the bag with the golden drawstring that was made of blue felt, and look at the purple innards, and oh my shit. So, we're just going to uh, acknowledge that these exist, and you will know that if you buy a set of them, I may keep these bags. Just, just because. That is so beautiful. Why are you so beautiful? Anyway. Back to these speakers at hand and not the awesome bags from another set of speakers that I forgot to talk about. The tweeter is the same. It's stronger on the passives, on the B1s. It's not a terrible thing because we're in a big ass room and you're gonna put these in a big ass room or on your desk. I've already said on your desk, they work, they work. They work, I'm gonna give them like, okay, fine, they work on a desk. They probably work better in a room, and then there's no bass, and you're like, well, how can they work better in a room if there's no bass? Well, because they're specifically designed for a subwoofer. You have to have a subwoofer. Put them on a desk, maybe you get away with a little bit of less low end. No, they need a subwoofer. Tweeter's a little harsh. No, I don't wanna say the word harsh. Tweeter's higher outputting than the powered monitor. So, whereas the six is needed to be out here to have the massive goddamn AMT. This will work. They push it a bit, and you could tell when you're listening to music when you compare the two. Because I had those up, and then I had these up, and then I had those up again, and I have these up again. Now I have them all playing at the same time, because center channel, 
pair through an audio transparent projection screen and then those and I got them to balance and even when I just do the test tone on my receiver to balance the volume you can hear that the tweeters are just they're softer they're gentler on the actual measured studio monitors imaging with the left and right spot on you died it's always been a thing it's always been with that AMT you can't get away from it you put that there Put that there, boom, that's where people are singing from. Vocal clarity is exceptional. We're gonna have to compare to the other speaker that's $300, which is these Kefs. Excuse me, Kef. Now the Kefs here are coaxial, which adds another flavor to the party. They also do low end. So they're really designed, like, I could feel what these are designed to do and what these are designed to do, and what those Aperion uh, 5Bs are designed to do. And I think you don't want to compare to these Kefs, because the Kefs are really music speakers. They make a center, but you put them up left and right, and they, they work. You put them for, for movies, and it's sort of like, ooh, they don't, they're not happy with that volume. These are happy with that volume. Those Aperions are happy with that volume. They eat it up. And yet they still do low end. So from an engineering standpoint, $50 more, a Perion 5Bs, probably what I'd take in a home theater. But if you have Emotiva amps and you have a lust for an air motion tweeter, because it will be more detailed and sharper, sharper is probably the right word, than any soft dome. And even that is a dome. And here you go. I just wish they threw, because here's the thing, Emotiva had to make a decision. Either you make a full, 100%, it's a speaker that'll stand on its own, you put it in a stereo configuration and you're done, or they tweak the line to make it work better for home theater. And Emotiva is definitely m leaning more towards a home theater company than it is towards a like just straight up stereo. You get the powered monitors, the studio monitors if you've got a desk, Air Motive Fives. You step back and you want you want room their whole lineup and i'm sure if i've got other speakers it would be the same thing is going to uh, cater towards higher volumes moving the low end off the speaker especially for like the rear channels which is what you expect anyway i just was hoping these weren't pushed into that sort of category of i'll just remove the low end a little bit so it doesn't distort but nah. they need a switch is what they need you know hey i want to have no bass or i want to have Normal bass, make it happen. Because they're not bad speakers, they're not bad. I like them. I've had them up here. I've had them up here with those, and it's all been working in one nice congealed mess of awesome. I mean, just just look. I'm a, I'm a guy, so I get to get off to like this view. Not many uh, other people can like look just like down the line of four identically matching speaker faces and be like, oh, why are there four in front? It's so cool. Ooh. Are those self-powered? Ah, oh. you got 600 watts coming out of these and then these are self-powered with like 200 watts and nipples, 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 nipples. Actually, they're 100 watts a piece. They're not super big. They're not like big, like huge, which is a great feature. They're the same size as those, obviously. They're, 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 these are those. These are those. These are those for much cheaper. Not actually much cheaper, but you can't put these in your home theater. If, if everyone had a pre-out in their living room, which you can't have, I would just say buy the Air Motive 5. Spend a little more money and get these. They're self-powered. They sound legitimately... 10% better than those on any amp. I've tried these on the Emotiva A100. I have them now set up through this, through the Enog deck, and these on the same sources just just are, are better sounding. It's better sounding. So this isn't a negative review. It's just an explain, explain explanatory review of okay, Emotiva B1, light and bass. Great imaging, excellent tweeter, tweaked up a little bit, good mid-range, good, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good in the hood. They're not that pretty. Honestly, they're still not that pretty. They need some more contrast here. Oh, and I want to point out another thing. 
on the powered monitors here, you can see there's the blue LED, which I have covered with red tape over and over again to make it very light purple. There it is. There's the LED hole at the bottom of this. So they didn't change anything. They put it in upside down, but that's it. There wasn't hard for Emotiva to make new speakers that are passive. Just make the holes in the back much smaller and put two of them. These will be appearing. I bought these. I bought these with the Patreon money. If you don't know about the Patreon, the Patreon's linked in the description in the upper right hand corner. I use the Patreon money to pay the bills, pay the rent, and buy random shit that I think people want to see reviewed because companies won't send it to me. This was one of those items. This was one of those items. That, are you ever Zeos? Are you ever going to review the B1s? And I went, sure. Eventually they were just, they were out enough. People had, other people had talked about them and I wanted to know, but threw money at it. And now one of the benefits of being on the Patreon is that when I'm done with stuff like this, which you guys bought with your money, I sell them back to you because I don't need a pile of, I, I have piles of speakers and I need to get rid of some speakers. So if you head to the Patreon, it's the $5 a month tier and higher gets access to the yard sale that happens once a month from the 1st to the 10th. And these speakers will be in that yard sale. I may also sell the Aperions. I'm not 100% sure on that. It's most likely. I was going to sell the Kef Q100s, but they're too good. To, I want to compare them against other coaxials. I've got other Kefs coming that I want to, you know, review and say, okay, now here's the A1, here's the Q100s. And, so those will probably stay, but these, zero starting bid and I pay shipping. That's the way it works. Unless you're international, and I will ship international if you pay half the shipping. So if you're in Hungary and you want this set of speakers and you bid $83 and that's the highest bid, then you'll pay $83 plus whatever the half the shipping is to Hungary. What is she doing? Yeah, that wasn't a smart idea, was it? You wasn't smart. I'm going go on that. Okay. I'm done talking about these. I'm sure you guys are going to complain that I didn't talk, you know, about the sound enough about how that can go on crooked as fuck. Why can every other manufacturer make it so that the magnetic grills just pop on and they're perfect? And these are just like drunk Larry's grill alignment. Fushed, fushed. Okay, we're done talking about these now. I got a few more speakers to talk about. And then I'm going to get those LS50s up here. Oh, how hard are they to drive? They're not. They're not that hard to drive at all. It's just... They have pretty good efficiency due to that tweeter. And I don't really want to tell you to push them any harder than that. Because then the tweeter starts to hurt. Like, if you're just pushing a lot... Movies, they're perfect. Because there's an explosion tank drive-by. But music, it's sort of like, on a desk, they're fine because you keep them calm. Out here, you try to rock out, you're going to tell that tweeter's tweaked up just a little bit. Still think these are better for music. And then there's Cat. And then there's links to Patreon and the wallpaper. The sad, com contemplating Mary is just like, Marie is, mm, what's going on? All right, moving on. Sound demos of these, by the way, in the description, along with the wallpaper link and Patreon link and everything else. And if you want to buy these, yard sale. This month's yard sale, whenever that is. Good, moving on.